Hello, I'm Mary and thank you so much for coming. I pray that as you listen to this video today, your life will not remain the same again. Amen. Uh, so, we're dealing with the series Contending for the Faith. And I was to teach this morning on the pathway to maturity from Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But then I'll just introduce that um, so that this becomes a proper session, a prophetic and prayer session. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, the Bible says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now, every believer has a great destiny in Christ. Yesterday, we took our time to answer the question, who is Jesus? And to answer the question what the gospel is as the message that saves and this morning I want you to know first and foremost that every believer has a great destiny in Christ and the Bible calls that destiny the hope of his calling the hope of his calling that there is an expectation in the heart of God when he calls men God does not just call men to become nothing. God does not just call men without an intent. When God calls a people to himself, there is a destiny attached to that call and he has an expectation. And um, God's joy is made complete for want of word if and when we evolve and we become portraits of his expectation. Unfortunately, many believers, if at all believers, do not grow do not transit to get to that point where they bring satisfaction to the heart of the father as reflections of his glory in experience i'm reminded of a statement that i made i think it was in canada while we we're having the sound of revival i said um, revivals are ignited and sustained primarily to the degree to which god finds vessels that are available and yielded i said that there are no dates for revivals revivals happen the day god finds vessels that are yielded and vessels that are available hallelujah and so when god calls a people at the back of his heart he calls them not just to use them but he calls them to give them an opportunity to transit until they become expressions of his glory, reflections of his glory. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 from verse 18, it says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So there is a dimension of glory God desires to be revealed in and through the saints. Verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creature awaited the manifestation of the sons of god i think it's nlt or one of these versions that says creation is waiting for god to reveal those who his sons truly are truly are hallelujah so every believer has a great destiny in christ i want you to know that when you are called to walk with the lord when you are called to serve him when he beckons on us it is not to waste our time it is not to waste our destiny i was so touched as pastor nat was you know just sharing his story while he ministered and um the story is everywhere when god calls a people for a long time they look like fools because you will need to follow a path that is unfamiliar a path that is outside of the norm and sometimes you will need to trust him by faith even when there's no evidence there hallelujah and so it, for a long time it will look like you're wasting away for a long time it will look like your destiny is robbed of color of beauty of progress but eventually as you walk with him the hope of his calling begins to find expression through your life and you begin to evolve step by step line upon line precept upon precept until you eventually become a manifestation of the glory of God. And when he presents you as a portrait of his glory, he will cause the nations to worship him through your life, through the excellency of who and what you would have become. Are we together now? 
it's important for all of us to know that we all together corporately we have a high calling in Christ and um, we have a great destiny now the new birth experience as we know is not the totality of the believers experience please listen at the point where you get saved like we had many people saved yesterday night when you get saved that is not all there is to your journey to your becoming as simple as this sounds there are many believers who do not know that there is a journey beyond salvation i call it so as soon as they encounter jesus they receive his life in that initial new birth experience they shut down on their hunger they shut down on their pursuit they become casual church goers just maintaining themselves around the corridors of salvation not knowing that we are called to start that journey by accepting the lordship of jesus but that it does not stop there my charge for us as we pray is that god is calling us deeper there is still a journey beyond salvation so i wrote here that the new birth experience is not the totality of the believer's experience but the starting point of that journey are we together now at the point you get saved that is not all that god wants to do in your life i hope you realize that god's goal for you is not just to save you no the bible says as many who believed in him he gave them power to become power to become those who have already believed he gave them power to become sons of god even to them that believed on his name behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us he says that we should be called sons of god he says now are we the sons of god and it did not yet it does not yet appear what we shall be like and the word sons there it doesn't it doesn't mean a male it just means is is the is the greek word huios it means one who by reason of knowledge has attained the same status with his father when jesus called god his father and he being the son they accused him they said because he claims equality with god hallelujah so god's goal is not for us to remain children to remain weak um he wants us to live a victorious life he wants us to be reflections of his glory the end point of the journey the believer's journey with god is that you eventually become a reflection of the glory of god now with respect to this journey of transformation there are three kinds of believers and i want you to please listen carefully with respect to this journey of transformation there are three kinds of believers from scripture number one there are those called infants infants they are saved but they are void of knowledge they are void of transformation they are called babes infants hallelujah i promised a charge so i'm not going to go into the detail of explanation but just for you to know that everyone who comes into christ is received as a believer but an infant likened to what happens in natural birth there's no woman who gives birth to an adult no matter how big the child is they just say this baby is really big but it's still a baby are we together there are babies that come out uh in a very interesting way but they are still babies <laughs> i think i should be modest and leave it there there are still babies are we together there are those who come out literally looking like adults but they are babies they are babies so we have an infant a babe number two the second category of believers we have those we call transformed believers they are no longer babies they have transited to a realm where we call them transformed believers and then the third category are called empowered believers so we have three kinds of believers an infant even though in christ then we have a transformed believer one who has submitted to growth the systems of growth the systems that produce maturity then we have the empowered believer now please look up the difference between a transformed believer and an empowered believer is that one has been enlightened but has not received the grace component are we together to manifest and defend his or her transformation 
So when you speak with a believer who is transformed, you will find everything God. But when it has to do with demonstrating the kingdom, you may not be able to find that in the life of the believer. If you probe the believer with respect to spiritual understanding, you will be impressed at their level of transition. But when it has to do with demonstrating the reality of the kingdom, bringing God to the scene here and now, they would be at a loss. So, an infant void of knowledge even though in Christ, void of empowerment even though in Christ, then we have the transformed believer one who has opened up himself to the ministry of the word he's allowed himself to be mentored he's allowed himself to be built he's understood the rudiments of the kingdom albeit without the ability to defend the things that he or she claims to know then we have the empowered believer now watch this it is the believer who is saved the believer who is transformed and the believer who is empowered that becomes a witness if you are not saved transformed and empowered you may be called a believer but you cannot be called a witness are we together jesus was already mentoring and teaching the disciples but he never called them witnesses he was done with his lectures and then he said tarry ye in jerusalem even though enlightened until you be endued with power from on high and when the day of pentecost was fully come do you know that from the day that the holy spirit came upon the disciples they became apostles they became witnesses they raised other disciples but they were never called disciples again so we have three of these categories in this place right now and in every congregation in every city we have those who are outside of faith they've not even encountered jesus christ at all then we have those who are in christ but children but babes and the bible says an heir as long as that heir is a child he differed nothing from a slave even though he be lord of all that means when you see a believer who is an infant and you see an unbeliever their results literally look the same the only difference is that this one has believed in Jesus Christ. Are we together? The potential for a great destiny, the potential for healing, deliverance, and excelling life is already in him. That incorruptible seed is there. But in experience, you may not find any difference. It is dangerous to be saved and to remain an infant because although you have the life of God, the potential of that life may never be revealed and these are the kinds of people that consistently misrepresent god and misrepresent the christian faith because if you are to learn jesus from the lens of one who is in christ but an infant you will not see anything from his life that um, draws you to jesus same pain as he was before he was saved same challenges same ignorance same oppression and yet the person is saved now that person has to go past that realm of infancy and childhood and the process that leads that person is called transformation he gets to a point where he's now called a transformed believer are we together and then he now moves further to get to a realm of empowerment empowerment by the holy spirit if you contend for transformation and empowerment now you become a vessel not only available you become a vessel that is yielded at that point you can serve the purposes of the kingdom with excellence God can do much with your life are we together there are people who are safe but cannot be used by God they have no capacity they've not grown to a point where they can be trusted with the destinies of nations they've not grown where they can be trusted with the destinies of other believers so the goal is not for believers to be saved and then remain as congregants as we call it believers to be saved and then remain just as members of an assembly helplessly looking onto one man of god every week for the rest of their lives the church was designed to be a place that allows for maturity 
where those who are lost come into the fold as infants and then they transit to a point of transformation to a point of empowerment they now find purpose in christ and they are deployed by the wisdom of the holy spirit to the various strata of human activity so that they can represent the purposes of god this is god's goal and if you do not submit to this journey look up please you may be saved but i assure you that your christian experience will be a plethora of frustrations so we have several believers who are saved but would not grow the excitement that comes with walking with god is far from their lives because you see you will only know how exciting it is to walk with god as you serve him not just when you love him as you serve him you have the opportunity to see his power to see his wisdom to see his grace walk through your life hallelujah several believers are stuck as infants they can go to church for years for decades and remain as infants longevity in church does not automatically transit you to a matured believer no now let me say this this process of transition is enhanced as you encounter three unique ministries and this is where i'll stop for this morning and then we'll pray this process of transition from an infant to a transformed believer to an empowered believer is enhanced only if and when you encounter three unique ministries number one the ministry are you writing yes i'll take it again i'm seeing some of you looking at me that the transition from infancy are we together to the point where you become transformed to the point where you become empowered is enhanced number one by the ministry of the holy spirit write that down please when you encounter jesus you are introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and there's a lot i can teach about encountering the holy spirit because the bible has a lot to say about him the Holy Spirit essentially has a threefold ministry on earth. The first dimension of his ministry is to the entire creation. He is the life giving force to creation. Number two, the Holy Spirit has a unique ministry to unbelievers. He says, When he, the Spirit of truth, is come, well, that's to believers, but that he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. His ministry to unbelievers is the ministry of conviction. He does an inner work within their heart, drawing them to Jesus. Then he has a ministry to believers. Are we together now? When he comes to believers, he empowers them by making them alive unto God, giving them illumination, and then providing guidance and direction. The Holy Spirit for you. So when you get saved, and you're not introduced to the unique ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I think this has been a great source of confusion in the body of Christ because even though the Holy Spirit plays a role in your being saved, there is a separate encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Yeah. And if you do not encounter the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you will be always deficient. There are levels of illumination you may never have. There are levels of direction, guidance for your life you may never have. The Holy Spirit officially is the custodian of the power of God. The Holy Spirit, by the description of his office, is the custodian of the power of God. It is impossible to see the power of God move to a life, through a life, to a nation, through a nation, to a church, through a church outside of the ministry of the holy spirit the holy spirit today is the extension of the presence of jesus he is the custodian of the power of god micah chapter 3 and verse 8 i believe surely i am full of power by the spirit surely i am full of power by the spirit i am full of power by the spirit he is the custodian of God's power. 
the holy spirit is the one who has the unique ability to search the mind of god and to reveal to the saints the things that no eye has seen the things that no ear has heard the things that has not come into the comprehension the heart of man the bible says but god has revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches all things yea the deep things of god are you learning now so when you are saved the next ministry you need to encounter is the unique ministry of the holy spirit causing you to be alive unto the things of god causing you to receive illumination from the word causing you to receive guidance and direction and then bringing eventually maybe not immediately empowerment to your life to be a witness number two the second ministry you must encounter if this transition must happen to become this superior version of a believer is that you must encounter the ministry of the word please pay attention the ministry of the holy spirit and the ministry of the word it is called the logos of god john chapter 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god verse 2 says the same was with god in the beginning verse 3 says all things were made by him and without outside of him was not anything made that was made the ministry of the word not the word as a person the word as a compendium of god's thoughts is called the logos of god are we together now now the assignment of the holy spirit is to strengthen you from within your inner man the assignment of the holy spirit is to guide you as you explore truth the assignment of the holy spirit is to bring direction the assignment of the holy spirit is to bring empowerment but you see the word of god as contained in the bible listen carefully please if you are not introduced to the ministry of the word you will be bankrupt of spiritual knowledge acts chapter 20 and verse 32 and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up build you up build you up build you up the word is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified hallelujah this is very important many believers are not exposed to the ministry of the word now let me tell you this if you are exposed to the ministry of the holy spirit and you are not exposed to the ministry of the word eventually you will begin to practice all kinds of things that look spiritual but will be demonic because the assignment of the word of god is to give boundary and to help you understand how the holy spirit operates god operates within the jurisdiction of scripture and if you are not mentored to understand and respect the thoughts of god there is a way the holy spirit cannot behave as dynamic as he is his dynamic operation is within the jurisdiction of scripture many people do not understand scripture and that is the reason why they can call any experience god there is no basis for judging experiences because they have not honored the ministry of the word are you learning now you need to know the thoughts of god Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus you know by now that victorious living is a product of victorious thinking and I'm not just talking of brain work there is a belief system like a software that you must allow to be implanted within your spirit man and your mind it is that belief system that transits any individual to a sign and a wonder or leaves you in spiritual mediocrity the difference between any two believers principally is the level of light the level of spiritual illumination the degree to which they have allowed the ministry of the word to prevail over their minds their thoughts or otherwise so you can find two believers genuinely saved are we together 
but they never attain unto a point of transformation because for the one he's opened up himself to the ministry of the word learning the ways of god line upon line precept upon precept knowing god's idea about prayer knowing god's idea about demons what does god say about demons what does god say about finances what does god say about character what does god say about victory if you do not know you will be in ignorance i hope you know that even satan depends on the word of god to afflict believers when he came to eve he said what did god tell you this is what i want to find out first so that i know how to attack you are we together all things for the believer the modus operandi of the kingdom the way we behave our code of operation is hinged on scripture everything happens because of the word god moves because of his word are we together now he's bound himself by covenant to his word that everything the word of god does not allow god will not do even if he can do for you so the basis for seeing god move in your life is not just sentiments and cries and whatever it is as sincere as those things are if god is to move upon your life there must be a scriptural basis who is learning now many believers do not live by the word direct disobedience to matthew 4 4 that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god as a compendium of god's thoughts you have to think like god to experience his results you cannot think carnally and get the results of a spiritual man you cannot think in ignorance and want the result of one who is full of light how do you know you are full of the word it affects your thinking it affects your speaking isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 and if they do not speak after this manner it is because there is no light in them there is a way light bearers light carriers speak you don't speak the language of defeat you don't speak the language of weakness and it's not just some blind fanatism you know no 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 it is out of the abundance of your heart you've been cultured the kingdom has has given you a new orientation the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of i'm blessed in the city blessed in the country are we together your speaking is consistent with the word of god you need to know how to engage the word for your profiting and as i always teach there are three ways to engage the word in fact four for your profiting number one is to study study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth study number two you listen to the word that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the first hearing produces awareness the second hearing produces conviction faith cometh by hearing and hearing hearing are in levels there is a level of hearing that brings you into an awareness but not conviction there is a layer of hearing that brings you to the realm of conviction persuasion so you engage the word by studying it you engage the word by listening to it you engage the word by speaking speaking is the word homologio repeat as you have heard speaking i was saying it to my people i think a week or two ago i said i will never repeat after satan no matter what satan says it ends there if satan calls me a failure i will not repeat it after him something happens when you repeat i prophesied as i was commanded and the moment the man repeated as he had creation happened so destruction happens when men repeat creation happens when men repeat when god says a thing you say it like him if satan says a thing you shut up you don't repeat after him are we together now i prophesied as i was commanded he told me what to say but creation only honored what i said in obedience so you study the word you listen to the word you speak the word and then you obey the word 
these are the four ways we engage the word the ministry of the word for our profiting you study it you listen to it you speak in confession declarations of faith and then you obtain grace to obey you obey the conditions that commit god to perform for you hallelujah the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of the word the final ministry you need to encounter to enhance this transformation process this empowerment process that makes you inexperience a revelation of god's glory is called the ministry of the teaching priest the ministry of the teaching priest jeremiah 3 15 the ministry of the teaching priest blessed is he who comes in the name of our god please give it to us 315 blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god and i will give you pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding I said that in US I said that in Canada and now I'm repeating the same in UK because it is true you are you are as fortunate as the quality of the teaching priest that God connects to your destiny did you hear what I said and you believe me on this the kind and the quality of teaching priest that you access on your journey to becoming can make a whole difference in your spiritual adventure there are people today whose stuntedness spiritually is not a product of rebellion their hearts are ever open but they have been ill-fed because of the quality or otherwise of the kinds of teaching priests and i say this with every sense of humility and responsibility i have met sincere believers who love the lord you see the passion in them to grow the passion to learn but it was unfortunate for them to come under submission uh, under a teaching priest that may not be enlightened enough to produce the kind of nourishment that translates to power so when god wants to help a man he brings you at the point of infancy if samuel never met eli probably he would never become prophet samuel it mattered what eli told him it formed the foundation of his prophetic ministry are we together now so there are many believers who unfortunately have come under all kinds of ministries with all due respect now and some of them that became their destruction they learned things that were not correct they learned things that were not even godly and they received that error with with heartfelt loyalty and dedication to their peril to their destruction some of them are just undoing the things that poor mentorship produced for 10 years for 20 years and now they are having to reverse the process again painfully so so when god wants to help a man he helps you by introducing you to a teaching priest one who is able to show you the ways of god one who is able to introduce to your space the whole counsel of god now please look up as we prepare to pray there are people here who if they knew something about satan early enough certain tragedies would not have come to their lives there are people if they knew something about victory early enough are we together now they would be 10 hundred times better than they currently are there are people if they ever knew that there was favor in the kingdom there are people if they ever knew that they've been exalted with christ far above principalities and powers are we together there are people who if they ever knew that excellence was part of the blessings that come with the kingdom there are many people who do not even know that there are benefits to working with god like the utopian enoch he says how can i know except some man help me god uses men to help men 
God uses men as helpers to help men. I'm saying this because you have to take responsibility over your destiny. At the risk of sounding controversial, I must tell you this. You have a right as a responsible believer to verify the kind of teaching priest that you are listening to and that you are willing to submit for learning. Your destiny is at risk or glory dependent on who you listen to and how you listen. Are we learning now? Yes. I understand the implication of teaching God's people and I remain passionate about learning the things I do not know because in my rising will be the rising of those that God has brought under my care. I made a covenant with God that I will never sit down idle and lazy and just check uh, what do I teach here and there. No, I remain a student of truth, first for myself and then for the sake of those God has connected to me. I made up my mind that you would never listen to me teach you nonsense. You would never listen to me teach you blind opinions, truth that are based on scripture and produce results. Are we learning? The teaching priest. Now, let me tell you this. If you find a man of God that God brings to your life who serves you grace with truth, with character, with love, honor such a man and place value on him or her forever. Are we together? We live in a world where the value that we place on vessels is generally declining for various reasons. Some justifiable, others just an attack from hell. But you need to be careful. Something happens to you when you dishonor the Holy Spirit. Something happens to you when you dishonor the Word. Something happens to you when you dishonor the teaching priest sent to you. Among the many things that happen to you is that the investment of the Spirit placed upon their lives can no longer bless you. You can be around the anointing, but it will fail to bless you because the anointing flows through the vessel of honor, the channel of honor. Are we learning now? We have to pray. I'm fighting hard to keep my word. This is the passion I have as a teaching priest to make sure you get the truth. Are we together? So I want to make sure my conscience is clear that I do not omit something. It's so sad. I can't believe that um, I'm having to omit a lot of things. You have no idea the kind of meal you were to enjoy this morning. But we thank God for this. Um, I don't know what to call the menu, but you can draw strength from it until evening. Are we together? Now, I inconvenience myself this much so that we will pray so uh, don't you think we're wrapping up immediately we'll pray this is why I bent over backwards we'll pray for a few minutes but we'll take the time to pray the ministry of the Holy Spirit the ministry of the word the ministry of the teaching priest you would notice I did not mention prayer and I will tell you why. Because the ministry of prayer is the principal way you relate with the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? Yes. If you are not prayerful, it is impossible to enjoy a rich fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was speaking to a prayerful people. The love of God and the koinonia, the sharing together, the drinking together, the participation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Prayer for the believer is not an option. I'll talk a bit more on that in the evening. If you are not prayerful, it is an attack. Um, we say it back home. There are people who say, I'm not the prayer type. There is no one who is the prayer type. It is the modus operandi for growth. Acts 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now, please look up. No believer is given the liberty to choose the word or prayer 
so people say i'm a prayer person another person says i'm a word person both of them are in error the bible never created dichotomy except for understanding between prayer and the word every time you see the ministry of prayer you see the word the ministry of prayer and the word was classically demonstrated in the life of jesus at his temptation the holy spirit drove him matthew chapter 4 to the place of prayer and when he was done praying the bible says satan came to tempt him he never said i have prayed he said it is written even though it was from the place of prayer but he the weapon he used to challenge satan was not i have prayed your prayer life is as powerful as the level of illumination that supports that prayer listen carefully as we pray your prayer life is as powerful as the scriptures the spiritual understanding that backs your prayer you can pray amiss even though zealously so what gives life to your prayer is your fervency and the word compliancy of your prayer so if you really want to be prayerful the way to be prayerful is to be full of the word then your prayer produces power because everything you say and everything you do becomes consistent with the will of God and the Bible says this is the confidence we have in him that when we ask anything according to his will our confidence is that he hears us so can we pray a bit rise up on your feet if you can hold hands with someone that's fine but let's take a few minutes to pray let's begin our prayer in the spirit for a few minutes participate in the prayer we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word fix your eyes on jesus and let's pray for a few minutes go ahead and pray majesty keep praying Majesty, your grace has found me just as I am, empty handed but alive in your hands. Your majesty, my. Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Go ahead and pray in the spirit But ye building up yourselves on your most holy faith Praying in the Holy Ghost we are praying to become we are praying to evolve we are praying to be changed we are praying to rise to gain ascendance in the spirit someone is praying those who are following online make sure you join us as we pray you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you so in my life Be glorified in my life. Be glorified. Be glorified. 
high. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Lord, you get the glory. Shalabaka parataka prataka parakatos. Rekata prataka parakata laka praska parakos. Hallelujah. 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 We are still praying. You are going to ask the Lord to walk upon you. Walk within you. Walk upon you. Whatever it would take to become the believer that reflects the glory of God. Father, do that inner work by your spirit. Go ahead and pray. That inner work of purging. That inner work of consecration. That inner work of cleansing. Go ahead. Until you become that vessel that is unto honor. Someone is praying. I'm tired of being a babe. I'm tired of being an infant. Saved but not transformed. Transformed but not empowered unable to do much for the kingdom that my life seems to be a consistent misrepresentation of the potentials that are found in this spirit life go ahead and pray that the purgings of the spirit that the workings of the spirit will find expression within you someone is praying I desire to be a believer with power, a believer with wisdom, a believer with grace, a believer of stature. In the name of Jesus, someone obtain grace from God. Obtain grace from God. As a man of God, obtain grace from God. As a leader, obtain grace from God. Hallelujah. 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 Two more prayer points and then we're done for this morning. The next prayer point is you're going to cry, Lord, bring evidence to my Christian experience. That no one will look at my life and then I become a misrepresentation of who Jesus is because of the bankruptcy of fruit when Jesus came and saw a fig tree that had leaves likened to transformation but no fruit no result he caused it are we together this is very important that our hearts must be open to cry give me oil in my lamp let my nectar be deemed. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Until the coming of the King. Say, give me oil in my lamp. Let my light never be dim. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Until the coming of the King. Aye, aye. So give me oil in my lamp. Let my light never be dim. Keep me burning, keep me burning until the coming of the day. Give me oil in my lamp. Let my light never be dim. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Father, let my Christian experience produce results. Go ahead and pray. Compelling results. Results in ministry. Results as I evangelize. Results in business. Results in my place of work. The evidence required to be a fruitful witness. The evidence required to be a faithful witness. Come on, someone pray. Travel for a few minutes. 
bring evidence to my life bring evidence to my knowing you bring evidence to my loving you bring evidence to my serving you I refuse to be like the fig tree with leaves but no fruit come on someone pray leaves pray United Kingdom pray I desire to transit from spiritual infancy to a realm of transformation to a realm of empowerment where I become a witness indeed fruitful in every good work bringing glory to the name of the Lord producing results wonder working results results of power results of wisdom results of grace come on now someone is praying Give me oil in my lamp Let my light never be dim Keep me burning, keep me burning Until the coming of Give me oil in my lamp Shalaka parakata prataka parakata Rabata pronto sakata belaka parato sobra digata Give me oil in my land As a man of God As a businessman As a parent Lord let me carry fire The fire that produces results The fire that brings evidence The wisdom that brings evidence The grace that brings evidence Abalaka parata kata prata kate, prata kata prata kata para kata pras kata para kata, embra kata pro kate balaka talks. The grace to pray, the grace to stay with the word, the grace to pray, the grace to stay with the word, the grace to pray, the grace to stay with the word, the grace to pray, the grace to stay with the word, the grace to pray, the grace to stay with the word. The grace to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The grace to embrace the ministry of a teaching priest. Give me oil in my lamp. Let my light never be dim. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Until the coming of the day. Give me oil in my lamp. Shata balakata prakata balakata bat. Rakata pranta ka parakata paranto sopra katelex. Give me oil in my land. Shananta parata ka praska ta balaka paratos. Ebra kate pa pa ka rakata praska paranta ka prega ta balaka ta. Give me oil in my land. Baranto sopra ka barata ka prata ka pala ka barata ka pala ka sa Until the coming of the day Ani malato savali ka barato siye ke Ina malashala ka barato siye ke barata Briga de belene ka barata ka ta barata barata ta Sada balaka da balaka da balaka da balaka da Rata balaka da pranta ka parato sopra ka te balata ba Strengthened with might in the inner man That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith Rata la parato sabre da balika parahas ka parato sabre In Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray for someone here is a prophetic word for you give God time in your life give God time you've given other things of lesser value time give God time the prophetic word for you is God is saying I need more time I need more space I want to make you but you are constraining me you're constraining me it is true that there is an apostle within your spirit but he cannot emerge until you give god time 
there is a prophet within your spirit but you need to give God time there is an evangelist locked up within your spirit but you need to give God time there is a worshiper a prophetic psalmist a mistral locked up within your spirit but you need to give God time there is a kingdom entrepreneur but you are not able to access the wisdom that produces wealth because you have not given God time there is a mother like Mary nursing Jesus who will be a savior but you need to give God time you are too distracted the Lord is calling for time crying for time more time in the place of prayer more time in the place of worship some of you God is speaking to you you need to reduce visibility go back to the secret place reduce visibility it is better for God to see you so that men can celebrate you if men celebrate you alone your relevance will be exhausted the secret place is where you find that fountain of endless relevance give God time we're ending on this note give God time give God time more time in the place of prayer more time in the place of the study of the word more time in the place of confession listening to the word more time in the house of God your life is too busy you are in a hurry in a hurry in a hurry in a hurry with spiritual things it is line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little the level of investment you make sowing in the spirit that is the level of harvest that comes through your life give God time give God time give the Holy Spirit time give the word time give prayer time give the teaching priest time so that you are made in a hurry so that you are built in an accelerated manner you will not become a person of stature when you are in a hurry with God a hurry with prayer a hurry with the word a hurry with the ministry of the Holy Spirit give God time this may not be a prophetic word for everyone but I want someone who God spoke to and you know this is the word from God give God time this is why you came for this conference the maker wants to make but give God time time to emerge that prophet time to emerge that apostle time that the songs that you need to sing as a worshiper you need to receive songs not just compose songs there are sounds in the spirit but like a default antenna you are not able to receive the sounds for the season give God time in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray let me give someone an opportunity this morning to make Jesus Lord of his or her life it is an apostolic conference and we seek to see this the, the law saved in addition to the maturity of the saints i want to give someone an opportunity from the start of this session this morning the holy spirit began to convict your heart perhaps yesterday you never had a chance to come for someone listening someone following by way of internet and for someone who is here now here's how we'll do it for those who are just in front here and then for a few who are maybe the first row would give you an opportunity if you are making that decision to just come and stand in front once the front row is exhausted i will plead that you cooperate with the officials and just stand around the aisles i'm looking for just one sincere person who is saying apostle i'm not ashamed i need to make things right with jesus whether you are making it as a first time decision or you are rededicating your life to jesus here's your chance to make it right wherever you are i count one to five please leave your seat gloriously without fear without shame come to jesus let's celebrate them as they come one god bless you thank you my sister i see some of you coming god bless you please let them come until the front row is filled and then god bless you god bless you they are coming. Let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, Koinonia. God bless you. Let's celebrate salvation.
God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. The Lord is giving you a new beginning. Are you celebrating them? And for someone who is making that decision online, I'm about to lead God's people through this powerful prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it matters that people come to Jesus in genuine repentance and to receive of his life. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you're coming, please very quickly, very quickly join them. I see that there are still people at the aisle. Once it's filled up, then you can stand right where you are. God bless you. My brothers and my sisters, I want to thank you for responding to this noble call. It is the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. The decision to receive Jesus Christ and to receive of his life. I want to lead you through a short but powerful prayer that is about to change your life and the cause of your destiny. Lift your right hand if you can, all of you. And for those of you who are not able to make it to the front, right where you are, just lift your hands in total submission. I see you right where you are, but more importantly, the Lord sees you right where you are. And for someone who is watching perhaps from your home, you're watching uh, through television, you're watching through the internet, this is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Say this after me and mean it from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God I go from glory to glory amen keep your beautiful hands lifted father thank you for this once the Bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away I decree and declare based on the authority of God's Word that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus name amen and amen so um just a little instruction just a moment you'll be given a card like this a pack like this all of you i'm going to be directing you on where you would go please do cooperate those who will be leaving from here and then those who will be using the other expressions i see that they are counselors so for those of you who are in front here you'll be requested to go to my right that will be your left from where you are please in an orderly manner all of you you file towards the counselors they will have a word with you they'll pray with you and you'll be handed a pack like this whatever you find inside please accept it with love from us to you uh, but more importantly from jesus to you to enhance your spiritual growth let's honor them as they go and then for those who are around the aisles i'm sure that you would find someone waving a placard please do cooperate with them and then they'll have a word with you very quickly let's honor them as they go thank you thank you thank you thank you keep clapping until the last person is gone Keep clapping until the last person is gone. Keep clapping until the last person is gone. Keep clapping until the last person is gone. Thank you. Keep clapping. And for those of you who have made this decision online, you will notice there is a barcode 
that is projected please do scan it and let's know that you made jesus lord of your life you'll be guided on what else to do in jesus name hallelujah right we're about to wrap up the morning session and it is going to be a powerful session this night in the name of jesus christ we're going to sing we're going to rejoice we experience miracles and then i'll be sharing with you um on a final thought something that god has put within my heart we would also take the time to pray and speak over our families our lives the united kingdom in the name of jesus and we we'll trust god for turnarounds of all sorts in the mighty name of jesus service for the evening starts five on the dot i know that some of you you're still going to be hanging around grace for you if i were you i'll take the time maybe grab a meal or something whatever you have to do even if you're around the premises just make sure that you're not distracted see this as a spiritual retreat are we together let it be a moment where you just pray and prepare your heart it's going to be a strong time of impartation in the night and I trust that you will access graces, the graces required for the next level. Indeed, for you, this will be a sound of revival. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One more time, please, let's honor Pastor Nath. Great, great man of God. Thank you, sir. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as we always do, we'll have the time, myself in company, of a few of the men of God that are here represented, will have a chance to just speak over the soul of this city and command every gate to be lifted and that in the name of Jesus the King of glory will come everything that is Antichrist over leads over the UK it comes under arrest as we make these declarations if you're a pastor here you're a leader I know that some of you have traveled in groups various ministerial teams I like for your heart to be open your chances this evening you will be accessing graces graces that will help you and empower you for the next level in ministry in the name of jesus but for now please let's all rise thank you for your patience and god bless you i decree and declare that for some of you even before evening you return with testimonies in the matchless name of jesus christ now together let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you by five.
so much for listening to the end. I pray that whatever that you have listened today, you are not going just to keep it, but you are going to do what God has told you through this message. And please, kindly, if you are new here or you are not, so I mean, you have not subscribed, kindly just click on the red button below the video and subscribe to this, my channel. And also you can share this video with someone else. Thank you so much and see you in my next video. Bye.